HBO presents One Night Stand with comedian Louis C.K. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis C.K. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, you guys. That's very nice. Thank you. How you doing, all right? Good. Good. This is good. You're out. Being out is good. It is. I don't go out anymore. I have a baby now, so I don't go out. Some of you have babies, but you don't love them, so you're here. That's cool. No, I mostly just go out with my daughter. I went uh, to the park with her the other day. I was at this park in uh, New York City Park, and they had these no drinking signs in the park. And it, but it doesn't say no drinking. It has a picture of like a martini glass with a line through it. Are those really the people causing the problems with the drinking in the parks? Are they reaching their target audience with a martini glass, really? Shouldn't it be like a bottle in a bag with a line through it? Do you see people at this park at four in the morning? Hey, motherfucker! <laughs> I try to go to movies, but movies are all shit now. They are, they're all shit. Like they just have this machine that just, just makes shit. I tried to see, I rented a movie, I rented the, the Jesus movie where they beat the shit out of Jesus for a couple hours. Wow, they kicked his ass, what happened? What did he key somebody's Camaro? What did the guy do? Look, I didn't like the Jesus movie. I thought it was a shitty movie. And it's, people get offended when you tell them that, like you're saying something wrong. It's like, I thought the Jesus movie sucked. And they're like, hey man. Like what, he's not in it, who gives a shit? <laughs> like Jesus cares about Mel Gibson's movie, you know? Look, I was raised Catholic, so I know he did that for me, and I appreciate it, you know, thank you. He, little he should have asked first, you know, I would have said, I'm all set, I don't need that done, because... A little presumptuous, only because, look, here's the thing, I was raised Catholic, and I'm not anymore, because they, look, if they're right, I am fucked, I'm going to hell, I am. Because I'm really a bad, I do wrong shit, a lot. Man, it's really, I'm going to hell, I know it. And I don't want to go to hell. And really because I don't like new places. That's really the reason. Because I'm afraid I'll go to hell. I won't know where to sign up for shit. I'll be all confused. Like the first day of school, you know? I wonder, is there like a schedule to hell? How organized is your damnation? Like, the first they put you in one room and some monster fucks you up the ass for a thousand years. You come out, you're like, well, I ain't fucking around in there, I tell you. I don't recommend that room. That was a drag. Then they take you and they put you in another room and they shit on your head. I don't know what the fuck they're doing out there, but what if, what if hell's not like that? What if I'm just standing in a hallway in hell like, what do I do? Where do I go? Some demon walks up to me, hey, ah, and I'm like, ah, demon. And the demon's like, come on, suck my dick. Ah! <laughs> now I'm blowing a demon in hell and it's horrible. And I'm thinking I shouldn't have lied so much or whatever. <laughs> but here's my question. What if when I'm done blowing the demon in the hallway? Which, how do you know when you're done blowing a demon in the hallway? I guess when he comes fire ants on you or whatever. When I'm done blowing the demon in the hallway, what if some guy in charge of hell walks up to me and goes, hey man, you didn't have to blow that guy, you know? <laughs> he just hangs out here. He's not part of your damnation or anything. What did you blow him for? I, I just assume you're supposed to blow people. But... He said, suck my dick, so I, you know. So say no, what's so hard about that? Jesus. Look, man, you better pace yourself. You're down here forever. You're gonna blow a lot of demons and elephants, all kinds of shit. Don't be freelancing in the hallways, for Christ's sakes.
And also, you've got to die to go to hell. And I don't want to die. I like my life. I'm very happy. I'm married, and I love my wife. I love her very much. My wife hates me. She fucking hates me. <laughs> she hates me so much. Like, that's what she does. Like, if you asked her, what'd you do today? I fucking hate that guy. That's what I did today. I hate Louie. She's so mad at me all the time. Here's the latest thing. The other day, she got really mad. She said to me, you know what you did? You filled the dishwasher with dishes. You put the soap in, and you didn't turn it on. And I'm like, oh, shit. What are we going to do now? You know. <laughs> But here's the part where she blows my mind. This is amazing when she gets to this level. She says, well, why didn't you turn it on? Like, I have a reason for not turning it on. And I'm like, can't I just be stupid? Can't it just be that I'm a fucking idiot? That I filled the dishwasher and then I went, boo, and I walked away? I can live with that. I'm cool with that. But she says, no, why'd you do it? Which means I decided not to do it. Do you know how much more of an asshole that makes me? That means I filled the dishwasher and then I went, you know what? Fuck her, I ain't turning it on. She can suck my dick if she thinks I'm pressing that on button. I'll fill it, but I don't fucking press on, not in my own house. Why would I do that? That would be crazy. The thing that she's usually mad about is simple. She says that I don't listen to her when she's talking. And I don't. But it's not because I don't love her, blah, blah, blah. It's because <laughs> I try to listen. I really do. When she talks, I just stare at her face. I'm like, come on, bring the story. But somehow I'm like, what the f I can't do it. I try. <laughs> Because every story gets divided into 50 stories that all branch out into these crazy... And I'm like, holy shit. I've got ADD. I can't do it. I'm like, fucking please. But I try every time I try because I love this retarded woman. So I try really hard to listen to her stories. Other people don't even try. We go to parties. She starts talking. People just walk away like, fuck this. That lady's crazy. Who would waste time listening to that crap? Me! She can't help it. I really feel bad for her because the thing is that every word of the story gets her so excited that she wants to fucking run with it and she can't fucking just break through and get to the end or even the beginning. This is my wife telling a story. She's like, guess what happened to my mom today? I was you remember I told you my mom how she, when she was in college, not when she went to Michigan, when she transferred. Remember because that guy got weird and she had to leave because he was, not the Iranian guy, that was a different story. That guy, I actually, I think he was Persian. I, I heard that Persian actually split. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Pick a thing. Have some consideration for the fucking listener. I don't do that. Here's me telling a story. I bought a tomato and I ate it and it was good. <laughs> That's a story anyone can follow. It's about a tomato the whole time. <laughs> I like being married though. I do. I really like it. I seriously do. We were having sex, my wife and I, a couple of weeks ago, which is amazing that we did that because we never have sex. Never. Because we have a baby, and our baby's a fucking asshole and won't let us have sex. <laughs> oh, fuck, that kid's a jerk, man. Seriously. Every time she's got some urgent shit in her room. Papa, come in here! I am in now! Okay, I go in there. What's up? I need a pair of pants to put on my pony. <laughs> wow, holy shit. I'm trying to fuck your mom in there. Would you give me a break? Can't a guy fuck your mom for a minute?